Hello and a very warm welcome to another edition of Talking Germany, the show where we do just that. And my guest today can stake a very firm claim to being the most famous jazz musician in Germany. And here he is, Klaus Doldingham. Hello. Thank you very much for joining us today on Talking Germany. It's a great Thank pleasure. You. Now, Klaus Doldinger is not only an excellent saxophonist and band leader, he's also a leading composer of film music who says that perhaps his outstanding achievement was writing the score of one of the most popular German movies of all time. So start thinking, see if you can guess which one it is. Anyway, I'm sure we can very much look forward to hearing uh, what he has to say about the following topics. Still on the road, Klaus Doldinger has been on stage for well over half a century, but he still plays more than 50 concerts every year and he's got two new CDs out. Aging society, every fifth person here in Germany is now over 65. It's a stage of life that is full of opportunity, but as we find out, not everyone is sharing in the fun. And Money for Music, we take a look at GEMA, the organisation that collects royalties for tens of thousands of German musicians, and Klaus Doldinger is on the supervisory board. Klaus Doldinger, um, you have a huge reputation, as, a, as I've already explained, a justified reputation as a, as a jazz musician here in Germany, and around the world indeed, but... When I've been uh, researching for this show today, one thing that I've noticed is that you say of yourself, yes, I'm a jazz musician, of, of course I'm a jazz musician, but I'm also an entertainer. That's very important to you, I have the feeling. Yeah, I think if people listen to our music when we play with the band, they want to be entertained as well. I'm not there as a professor to tell about, to talk about the history of, of, of jazz or music. No, I, I'm... <laughs> We play our music and I, I wish that people enjoy what we're doing. Do Germans sometimes take jazz a little bit too seriously? Uh, maybe, but it's not only in Germany. I think it's all right. over the world. There are critics and people who are very serious about it. But very academic for me, sometimes, yeah. You know, I grew up with, <laughs> with, with, with blues and Dixieland. Yeah. Yeah. I, I used to play tra traditional jazz. By the way, there were British bands. I, I, I played once with mm -hmm. Alex Welch. Alex Welch? Yeah. Alex Welch yeah. or Chris Barber. Chris Barber, uh, He invited yeah, me, huh? I think it was his 75th birthday, I played with him. Oh, wow. I knew him from the, from yeah. the 60s already. Okay, well, one second. You're talking about mu jazz music around the world. You're talking. You're suddenly going off and talking about British music because you're talking to me as a Brit. But yep. is there is there something? Is there German jazz? Does such a thing exist? I wouldn't say no. I, I, I'm, you know, I, I only can speak for myself. Uh, what is German? It's difficult to say. I, I would say uh, German jazz musicians. There's many, many nowadays. Uh, they are like worldwide. But it's, it's strange. Yeah, sometimes you listen to the radio and you hear some yeah. jazz and you know it's Brazilian jazz or you know it's Scandinavian jazz. Mm -hmm. Why don't you know that it's German jazz? Oh, well, there's some German jazz ah. as well. OK, with a specific flavour. A specific flavour, this worldwide movement. Okay. For me, I, I'm very much also influenced by... Uh, uh, things I have heard in uh, North Africa, in India, mm -hmm. in Brazil, and uh, there are many influences, but at the end, when I write, write music and uh, compose a tune, it has to be something which is, is for, <laughs> typical for me, that like people could identify the music with me, with myself. From the heart. Yes, and that's that's um, has nothing to do with jazz, uh, with German or not German. <laughs> it's Klaus Doldinger. Okay, okay, yeah. <laughs> First impressions there of Hopefully. Klaus Doldinger. Hopefully, here's more. <laughs> At the age of 75, he's been a professional musician for nearly 60 years. And German jazz legend Klaus Doldinger still performs up to 50 concerts a year, featuring both classics and newer compositions from his recent albums. Most of the pieces are ones he recorded with Passport, 
considered by many jazz critics to be Germany's most important jazz rock band. It's been a training ground for dozens of talented musicians. Okay. Doldinger has won numerous awards and other distinctions over the years, including being named an honorary citizen of New Orleans, the legendary birthplace of jazz music. Klaus Doldinger was born in Berlin in 1936. During the Second World War, the family moved to Austria, then Bavaria, and finally settled in Dusseldorf. Doldinger finished secondary school there and then started studying at the city's music conservatory. That was also when he first began playing in various bands. But his breakthrough as a true star on the jazz scene came with Passport, which he founded in 1971. Doldinger has released more than 50 albums, working with musicians from around the world. But Doldinger has also successfully worked for film and television. He wrote the score for Wolfgang Petersen's Oscar-nominated international hit movie, Das Boot. It's just one of the projects that have made his name well-known outside jazz circles. Another is the theme music he composed for the popular Tartar Detective series which has been essential Sunday night viewing in Germany since 1970. He's performed all over the world, and today, Klaus Doldinger is our guest on Talking Germany. Okay, Klaus Doldinger, let's go right back to the early days. Let's go back to 1945. Germany has just been liberated by, uh, among others, the Americans, and you, as a youngster, hear your first jazz. Take us back to that time. Yeah, we, we, you know, I spent my early years in Vienna mm -hmm. and uh, 45 in uh, March, we heard thunder from the Russian army coming to Vienna and my mother, my brother and me, we went with a uh, big uh, car, LKB we call it. A truck? Truck. Yeah. Uh, that there are thousands of people leaving Vienna a huge and, uh, to Bavaria. Yeah. Yeah. And then we, we stayed for a few months in, in Bavaria and the, and the American army, GIs, they came there and it was the first time I got a chance to listen to jazz and eat my first orange juice. Well, you, were, you were nine years Ma old marmalade. at the time? Yeah, yeah. Nine, nine, nine years. Yeah. And you were eating orange marmalade Yeah, and, and, you, and you were listening to jazz. Oh, fantastic, yes. <laughs> and, and chewing your gum. Life. And chewing gum. <laughs> chewing gum. <laughs> and what yes. was it? What was the jazz? Can you remember? It was a kind of swing, I swing? guess, yeah. yeah. Could have been but it was the first time I heard rhythmical music, the way jazz has to be played. You and know? you would never have heard jazz before that, no, because it was banned, it all. was banned, it was verboten. Yeah. Yeah, the Nazis didn't want it jazz music around. Yeah. I, I even didn't know that this exists. Yeah. yeah. And were you thinking to yourself, me, Klaus Doldinger, I am going to be a jazz musician no. already? No. Far away, far away. Far away, away. yeah. You know, it took several years, but when I was 16, we, we founded our first Dixieland band, yeah. the Feet Warmers in the Düsseldorf, cool. with, <laughs> uh, with other guys, also 16 years old. And uh, I enjoyed very much playing traditional jazz, I must okay. say. I can imagine. Uh, but, uh, you, you're a multi-instrumentalist, but you chose the saxophone. Yes. Why? Yeah, because I, I loved... Uh, Sidney Bishy, Les Lester Young, yeah. uh, Sonny Rollins, Illinois Jacket, so many. Big names, good names, yeah. And yeah. You, there's, an, there's an interesting story about how you got your first saxophone. What was that? Yeah. Oh, a I, circus clown, is that right? Yes, 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 yes. yes. <laughs> You know, I, you know, there was not so much money young people, young kids got in those days. So I had to work during the holidays, uh, school holidays. I worked uh, to get the money together, 150 German marks to get my first soprano saxophone. I used one, of course, <laughs> from a clown. From a clown. It really was from a clown. Yeah. Wonderful. Have you, have you still got it? No. No? 
It's too long ago. Too long ago. Okay. Uh, we've already heard a little wee bit of uh, Klaus Doldinger's band Passport in the show. Uh, we're going to listen to a little bit more, and this time the focus is going to be on Klaus himself playing music that is very familiar to movie audiences here in Germany and around the world. So let's hear a little bit of the theme music from the film Das Boot. <laughs> well, you might laugh, yeah. I'm going to use a cliché now. It is a haunting melody. It's really true, yeah? When, when you wrote it, did you know that it was going to be... that it was something very special? No, no. You no never know, know before. You never know before. In, in, uh, the people involved <clears throat> in the work for the film, nobody knew that this is going to be... would be a great film. You know, they were working on it, and but, you know... How, and how did you get involved? Wolfgang Peterson was the director? I worked with him yeah. for several years already, you know, uh -huh. for several projects. And when he was offered to do the boat, he yeah. asked me, because we worked very well together. And uh, I read the, the book yeah. by Lothar Günther Buchheim. Mm -hmm. It's an original story, exactly. very it's authentic. It's very graphic, and, very uh, authentic. Yes, yeah. And, and, yeah. and I loved it from the very first moment. And it's important as, as a film composer that you get into the story. Also. And how does it, how does it work? Does, is, is there a method? Do you get... Do, uh, do you write the music and then it gets put to the film, or do you get given film material and you write the music to that, or is there uh, no in, system? In this case, I, I, I wrote the music before I saw the film. Uh, the, this theme, mm -hmm. I mean, there are many tracks. We did, when, when I saw the... the uh, we, we got videos in those days already. Yeah. <laughs> you know, before, in the, in the 70s, there was no video. Uh, I always had to go to the cutting room and, yeah. and watch, watch the film there yeah. and write everything down. Now, we, we had... Uh, Umatic was the so-called system, uh, mm -hmm. cassettes, mm -hmm. and it was, of course, easier than to work on it. Mm -hmm. if you had the, everything at home, you know, and could, uh, in the studio, of course, and uh, I loved it very much to, you know, during all those years between uh, the 60s until now, uh, to see how this developed, you know, from the very tough uh, beginning yeah, uh, with mono, uh, yeah. then stereo, then 16 track. Uh, you know, it's very interesting this, uh, to see how this uh, technology was growing up, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. And uh, I enjoy very much working nowadays on, on digital formats with DVD and you, know, you have everything in the studio, you know. I've got to ask you. Talking about DVDs and, and, and what have you, do you have a DVD of Das Boot, of, of the movie? Do you, uh, when did you last watch it, the movie? Oh, a few days ago. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, no, because I, I make a semin so-called seminar uh -huh. for people who work for television and, and film, and, and once in a year I make a seminar, we call it, mm -hmm. and I talk about what I'm doing. So yeah. then I, of course, they show some scenes of the film and talk about it, how this, how I worked on it and how, how everything was in those days. Oh, yeah. But of course, I, I always have productions I do nowadays, you know, there are different things, that, you, uh, of course. But um, everybody wants, again and again, they want to see this boat or never a new story, also an interesting yeah, yeah. flight. Two big uh, you movies know, that you've done, two big movies that you've done. <laughs> As we saw earlier, there's an organisation uh, here in Germany called GEMA that represents the interests of well over 60,000 composers, lyricists and music publishers by trying to make sure that they get payments on the music that they have written or published. Let's find out a little bit more now about GEMA before hearing from Klaus Doldinger in his capacity as a member of the organisation's supervisory board. 
GEMA is charging fees here, too. Even small-scale performances have to cough up one to two euros per song. And anywhere music plays in the background, licensing fees have to be paid to GEMA, even in elevators. Last year alone, the 700 GEMA employees collected some 863 million euros. The organization has a legally guaranteed monopoly in Germany. It uses a specific formula to distribute licensing fees to its 64,000 members, who own the rights to the music. That includes people like the musician known as Clouseau. His real name is Thomas Hübner, and he won this year's Fred J. Award, which GEMA presents annually for special achievement in popular German-language songwriting. Michael Jackson's heirs are among the more than one million other copyright holders worldwide who get royalties from GEMA every time one of their songs is played in Germany. But the Internet remains a minefield of unresolved conflict for GEMA. It's had a lot of difficulty collecting licensing fees and is involved in drawn-out legal proceedings with various Internet portals and agreements still seem a long way off. Well, you know, people always say Germany is a very efficient country, and that when I watch that report, it looks to me as though GEMA is a very efficient organization. It seems to be the, the most yeah. efficient in the world. You can compare it to other countries and you can say, yeah. Oh, yeah, there's best. a lot of work together with PRS in England or Suiza in Switzerland, mm -hmm. Zasem in France. Yeah. <clears throat> but uh, they work very, very well together, and there's some... Um, yeah, well, you know, working on the online um, problems, it's nice that GEMA works with PRS, for instance, and there are international committees now okay. taking care of everything. Okay, so GEMA, GEMA, GEMA works well. GEMA is an efficient organization, but I was reading on the internet, uh, there, are, there are quite a lot of people, including musicians, who are not necessarily happy with what GEMA are doing. Uh, here's one, a very good example. GEMA favors the large commercial copyright owners and almost ignores smaller performers like rock and jazz composers. True? Untrue? It's not true, no. It's not true? GEMA, of course, takes care of all kind of music. It has the obligation to do that and it makes no difference. But of course, the, the, if you write a hit, which will be played all over the world, that they, those people get more money than a guy who just writes a tune which is played by this, with his own band maybe uh, 30 times a year and it gets uh, <laughs> less money. That's obvious. <laughs> but I think there's a lot of people working out there for the, for the, for the big names, for the big labels. Yeah, They've got their people out the there, haven't they? The fact is that they get at least a little bit of money then. Sure. Yeah. It's better than nothing. Yeah, yeah, and it's often their, you know, yeah, their old you know, age pension. Always yeah. depends on how, yeah. much, on on the, on the uh, uh, accounts of of the performances, yeah. no. uh, 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 where it's, it has been played. You know, using the music and the the idea of of uh, what have you have composed uh, as written as a writer. It's also very important. Okay, you know. Uh, Different question. How good is the young jazz scene in Germany? I find it very interesting. There are some very interesting, like Michael Wolny. Ah, very Wolny's good. good. Wolny's good, yeah. Pianist and his trio, and he's mm -hmm. playing with, with Nils Landgren from Sweden. Mm -hmm. No, there's a very strong scene right now. Yeah. My friend Sigi Lok, with his act label, is very, very efficient on featuring those young talents. <laughs>
Well, happiness. What is happiness? You know, if you enjoy something, uh, music or whatever, yeah. uh -huh. and that can uh, happen. You know, it depends also on on the on the uh, circumstances with your family and with, with what you're doing. Like a musician, it's maybe a little bit, little bit different to somebody who works all his life in a job and then he finishes his job and then is the question what to do now. Mm -hmm. My father, he, he didn't find a way. But I always tell people, try to find something which can be even stronger than everything else. And it can be the music, jazz, literature, religion, whatever. To find, a, you know, a, a thing which fills your heart, you know, somehow. It's, I have a written a tune called Lucky Loser. Uh -huh. And this is the background, you know. Uh -huh. You lose something. Yeah. In this case, maybe you lose your profession, but yeah. you can find something else. Something else, and that might be uh, jazz, for instance. Okay, can be so strong that makes you happy each and every day. I like it. I asked you for a philosophical answer, and you gave me a philosophical answer. Let's do a little bit of quiz time at the end of Talking Germany. We traditionally end, uh, wind up with a quiz. Qu uh, uh, so oh, some yeah? quiz questions, quick questions, quick answers, please. Uh, we talked about swing music. Glenn Miller or Benny Goodman? Benny Goodman. What stimulates you more, composing or playing? Both. Both. We've talked about music rights. Downloading music, should it be free for all or should there be a charge? Should be a charge. I knew you were going to say that, yeah. The best movies that you've done the music for are The Never Ending Story and Das Boot. Which was your favourite? Das Boot. Yeah, I knew you were going to say that as well. Is jazz the music of the future or the music of the past? But jazz is timeless. Jazz it, is timeless. It started <laughs> 1900 somehow and it will be there ever. So speak of Mr. Jazz in Germany, Klaus Doldinger. He's been a good guest. If you've enjoyed his company as much as I have, then do come back next week. Until then, cheers. <laughs>